Hello, welcome to a new series on how to build an operating system. And this is going to be from scratch. So first, you may be wondering why would I be doing a tutorial on how to build an OS given my usual types of videos. Well, for starters, learning how to build an OS can be a very useful skill. It teaches you how a computer works at the fundamental level, which can help you make a which can help make you a better software developer. Here's a list of benefits. One, you will learn how a computer works at the hardware level. You will learn how to write software to manage that hardware directly. Two, you will learn the fundamentals of operating systems, allowing you to adapt any operating system, not just Linux. Three, if you ever want to hack Linux so uh, to fit your needs, you'll need to write at least one operating system on your own, allowing you uh, allowing you to write your own you know it's just like application programming if you're gonna start writing applications you must start with small ones and then work your way up to big ones it's the same with um, operating systems then you will open pathways to various low-level programming domains such as reverse engineering exploits building virtual machines game consoles emulation and much more assembly the, the language will become one of your most indispensable tools, tools for low-level analysis. Also to note, this entire series is based upon an excellent book that you can read called Operating Systems from Zero to One. I will leave the GitHub link in the description below along with the slides and uh, I have put the link right here if you wish to go see it. It's open source, you can download it. Um, I'm also going to be going through this. Uh, series, like I said, based upon this. Uh, through this series, one of the core features you will learn how to uh, to do is to read documentation from official vendors. At a minimum, it is necessary to understand the documentation so you can develop software for it. Because of this, the first couple of parts will be focusing on this vital information. Also, I would like to note that this is Hello World centric, meaning it will help you learn the core concepts that must be mastered before writing an operating system. However, like my previous videos, there are some prior knowledge requirements. Unlike my other videos, these requirements are actually extremely important so that you can understand and follow along. Building an operating system is not something that you can just casually do. It's pretty intensive and you must have a basic knowledge of circuits. You know, these include how atoms, electrons, protons, neutrons, and how current flows. You need to know this. You need to know Ohm's law. Uh, you need to know C programming, in particular variable and function declarations and definitions, while and for loops, pointers and function pointers, fundamental algorithms, and data structures in C. You're also going to need to know the basics of Linux. This includes how to navigate a directory with the command line, how to invoke command with options, and how to pipe output to another program. Uh, one thing I note, want to note is that yes, you are actually going to need to know how to understand circuitry and that's because at a fundamental level an operating system is responsible to all this interactions to go ahead and execute and all this um, the code and all these instructions and stuff so you know you may not need to know how these circuits work per se but you need to understand like how to properly use them and that's where this comes in. This whole series isn't going to have much on electrical engineering, but it is a necessary requirement. And you'll see because the next chapter, or next part, I mean, uh, will be going over circuits. You, you will learn how to write an operating system from scratch, and this is going to be by reading hardware data sheets. The real world, you'll not be able to use Google. So, I know everyone in my previous videos loves to just get the source code and cheat around, but we're going to be avoiding that because for something like this, you're not going to learn if you if you do that. You're also going to learn how to write code point independently. Like I said before, it's pointless to copy and paste. You know, you only learn when you actually do it on your own. I will be providing examples um, that will be shown in the book. However, you know, if you want to go, you can go find the book and find the solutions there. However, I will not be providing them in this video. 
You'll also, you know, down to the, to the computer, you will learn how a computer works from hardware to software and how all the layers interact with each other. You're also going to be using uh, Linux and then you're going to be using that for low level programming. So it's going to be important that you understand um, all that. You're also going to learn how you program a structure so that the operating system can run it. Like I said before, it's, you're going to um, be responsible for making sure that an operating system can run all of these um, programs. And so you need to know how these things work at a low level. You're also going to learn how to debug a program running directly on hardware. And we're going to be using GDB and Kimo. Um, we will be, you know, you'll learn how to use them as we go through. Um, yeah, if you aren't already experienced with it, you're also gonna be using, or you're also gonna learn linking and loading on bare metal x86 64 with pure C, no standard library, no runtime overhead, and uh, I'm expecting you to know what x86 64. Um, but for the record. If you don't know, it is an architecture, uh, and I'll explain more once we get into, I think, the next video is where we'll start getting into uh, more technical details. Um, yeah. So we're first going to start off with some uh, more abstract concepts. We're going to be starting off with uh, problem domains. Uh, when developing software, an engineer can't just worry about the software directly. There are many multitudes of different things to work on. A problem domain is simply anything outside of the software. When developing software, you have to make sure you properly utilize inputs, you know, you gotta utilize other software, and you gotta be using output methods like printers or fax machines or whatnot. Um, also, these types are called direct, um, and that means that they directly, you know, hence the word direct, they directly interact with your program or whatever you're trying to do. You know, if you're making a finance application, then you got to make sure that you can um, get the information that you need to, maybe from the stock market or uh, whatnot. Then we have the indirect types, and this is, you know, if you're have an audience that you're trying to make this for say again with the finance you have to make sure that you know the people using your program can understand it and get the data that you're trying to relay or whatnot depending on what your problem is uh, sometimes you require a domain expert uh, as you can probably guess a domain expert is someone who is very knowledgeable in that domain and sometimes they are necessary to break down problems for a software engineer. Um, a software engineer, when designing uh, and building code, can't always know everything about everything they're trying to do. You know, for instance, let's go back to the finance application. You know, a finance um, a finance expert, a domain expert, is required so that the software engineer can properly interpolate. Not interpolate, can properly, you know, analyze the information. The, because the software engineer isn't going to be an expert in finance. I mean, sometimes they will be, uh, but if sometimes it, it'll be just too much for the software engineer to handle to make it efficient. Other times, it's not worth for the software engineer to learn another domain. Um, <clears throat> you don't want the software engineer, you know, sometimes they may be trivial, but sometimes you don't want your software engineer wasting time going out and trying to learn new fields so they can make each application it's just not efficient and it's you're gonna end up losing more money um, it varies case by case but you know you have to use your discretion and all of these both of these occur when you're making an operating system for instance an electrical engineers domain is going to overlap with a software engineer, a computer scientist domain, to build an operating system. Uh, you know, for instance, like I was saying earlier, the software engineer is going to need to understand 
uh, circuitry and those basic pieces of information so they can properly build off of them. They are also going to need to know algorithms and data structures in C to make it efficient. So that is a case where it is overlapping. It's not worth the effort for the software engineer to learn that domain. Like, try learning electrical engineering. You know, that's a four-year major in, in colleges. You know, it's a lot and it's too much to learn. That, it's also extremely complicated if you're just going to build an operating system. That's why we have data sheets and stuff, so we can read the documentation um, and properly analyze it and understand it, so we don't have to go about understanding how it works. Uh, and this is at least documentation. When learning a problem domain, it becomes vital to understand documentation. That's something I notice when people ask me for help in a lot of my videos. They just don't understand the documentation and they don't know how to learn it. So we are going to, through this process, be learning how to properly use the documentation and data sheets from these providers so we don't need to constantly rely on other people interpreting it and telling us how to use it because like I said before in the real world we can't just ask for help if we're trying to invent a new product we have to be able to understand the documentation that the um, that is provided to us to build our application on it documentation is also the only reliable way to properly pass information you may read a medium article or something about it however that can become outdated um, Another thing to note is when you're writing documentation for, say, your operating system, once it's all said and done, you want to make sure that when you're writing documentation, you only include how to use it. Like, you know, you don't want to put in the implementation and all that stuff because then it becomes more of a hassle to maintain that documentation and it becomes less likely that you will continue to maintain it. So that's just something to note as well. Um, so this is over. Um, I know this is a bit short, but we are going to be hitting our hitting the ground with uh, running. If that's how the phrase go. I don't <laughs> really remember. Um, but yes, uh, this is something I'm excited about. I will be learning it alongside you guys. Um, if you have any questions, come feel free to come into the Discord. I will put a link in the description. I will also be putting um, a textbook on circuitry in the link below. Um, because if you don't know, you can just read chapters 1 and 2 of the textbook I link online, and you'll be caught up and ready to go um, to follow this tutorial. Um, Alright, I'll see you next time, where we will, I believe we'll be talking about circuitry and such. And then after that, we're going to be learning more about how the computer actually works. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are excited as I am for this series. I'll see you guys later.